We now look at a couple of smaller tools for processing uh, text files, uh, either because they are uh, useful generally uh, or because they're also introducing some notational conventions that have become popular and have been copied in many other uh, tools. And uh, set the stream editor is an example of the latter as well. Um, set is a editor that's designed to be used in pipes. That's why it's called a stream editor. You feed in a file through standard input. You get a result in standard output. It keeps just a single line at a time in memory and uh, you can provide it with a set of commands and it will test for each of these commands whether a condition for applying the command is fulfilled and if yes then it will modify the line according to the command. So you invoke set um, either by feeding something into standard input or you can also provide one or more files and then the concatenated output from processing these files will end up in standard output um, and <clears throat> you can provide either just as the first argument or prefixed with an option minus e uh, the actual editing command. You can also uh, combine one or several of these editing commands into a script file and load that with minus f. What does a set command looks look like? Uh, it's normally just a single character. This is the command character and some have some uh, optional arguments. But what's interesting is you can also uh, select under which condition should this command be applied. And the most commonly used selection mechanism is that you provide one or two so-called addresses. An address can be either a line number or it can be a regular expression. So we can, for example, write, we can prefix the command with, say, 5,10, and then the command will only be applied in lines 5 to 10, or if you provide a single number, then uh, it will be only applied in that line number. The square brackets in this particular notation here just indicate that whatever is between the square bracket is an optional part of the command. So only the command here is actually required. There may or may not be arguments. You can prefix, you can follow the address with an exclamation mark that inverts the selection. So the command will only be applied where the address does uh, not apply. Um, there is also an option minus n that will cause the set command not to output anything by default and then you explicitly have to ask for the current line to be printed with the uh, p command. So if you want to select only a subset of the lines, you can, for example, specify the address range and use the print command and call set with the minus n, the no print option. Otherwise, set will just pass through the file if uh, none of the commands have applied or it will output the uh, modified version of a line if one of the uh, commands has made a change to that line. More interesting than just providing line numbers here is the ability to provide a regular expression. A regular expression is a uh, pattern that you specify, which, as you may remember from uh, finite state machine theory courses, can be compiled into a finite state machine so you can decide in linear time whether an input string actually matches a pattern or doesn't. And the uh, we've encountered a very basic form, sometimes known as the globbing syntax of um, regular expressions in the uh, path expansion of the shell. Um, set uses a much more powerful form of regular expressions that in particular allows you to nest regular expressions. There's a, a grouping syntax with round parentheses. And you can also talk about uh, repetition of strings, for example. So it goes well beyond what the globbing syntax in, um, in the shell can do. 
in the set regular expression syntax, regular expressions to distinguish them, for example, from line numbers, are always surrounded by a pair of slashes. And inside uh, a uh, regular expression, a full stop or dot will match any character except for new lines. A, a non-meta character by its own will match that character. Um, with a star, the preceding item, whether it's a dot or a letter or a group of things, will match a zero or more times. So this allows you to repeat part of the regular expression. If instead of the star, you use a plus sign, uh, that matches the preceding item one or more times. You may recall from discrete mathematics the clean star symbol that was no doubt the inspiration of that particular choice of character here. Um, the question mark makes the preceding item optional, so it means you can it can repeat zero or uh, one times. Um, normally, if you provide just a sequence of characters between slashes, that regular expression will match for any string uh, that contains uh, something that matches the, the string that you've specified. If you want to restrict something to match only at the start of the line, you put at the start of the regular expression a circumflex. Likewise, if you put a dollar sign at the end, then the regular expression, the preceding string here, will only match at the end of the line. And if you want to have an exact match that the regular expression shall only match if it describes the entire line, then you put both a circumflex at the start and a dollar sign at the end. Similar to what we saw in the shell globbing syntax in uh, path expansion, um, the square brackets match one single character, any character out of the list of characters between the square brackets. So you can specify, for example, A to Z, you can use a hyphen in here in order to indicate a range of characters from the whatever collating sequence has been selected, for example, A to Z. Um, you can also invert the set of characters by using a circumflex. So if you want to have any non-space character, just write square bracket, circumflex, then a space, close square bracket. There's a couple of more meta characters that require a backslash. You can use parentheses to group something together and then the, for example, a following star plus or question mark will apply to the entire group and not just to a single character. And this notion of repeating something zero more times, one or more times, uh, zero or one times, you can also uh, specify arbitrary other numbers. You can say with curly braces that whatever comes before the curly braces has to match between n and m times um, and or has to match exactly n times if the comma m part is missing. And if you want to literally refer to any of these meta characters, then as usual, you can prefix it with a backslash in order to escape it. It's a little bit confusing here uh, because um, some of the meta characters were added on later and therefore require for backwards compatibility reasons a backslash, uh, others don't have. Um, a backslash. You will find lots of other tools that use almost the same regular expression syntax. However, they often differ a little bit in which meta characters require and do not require a backslash in order to be either a meta character or to be not a meta character. So in case of doubt, uh, check carefully whether you are using, for example, the set syntax or the grep syntax or the f uh, the e grep syntax or the Perl syntax or the regular expression syntax that's built into Emacs. They're all very, very similar to each other except for this little backsplash detail. And some of them have significant extensions in addition to um, what's available here. We'll talk about some of these when we come to the Perl programming language. So, Simple example, you have uh, a file or a position in a pipe where a text document flows through and you want to replace in this text document 
all occurrences of the word Windows with the word uh, Linux. For that, you can use the S command for substitute, and it has um, two arguments which are uh, surrounded by slashes as separators. Uh, so this is the string that matches, and this is the string that will be replaced. The first string here, and this is what the uh, slashes indicate, can in fact be not just an arbitrary string, but it can also be a regular expression. So you could, for example, put the capital W together with a lowercase w into uh, square brackets, and then both uppercase and lowercase would match here. The substitute will normally only substitute the first occurrence of this pattern in a line if you want to make sure that all occurrences in a line are um, processed then you have to put the global option g at the end here so there's a string of options as the third field as the third argument of this s function here Again, uh, this syntax you will find in other tools. For example, if you use the VI editor, you can type basically exactly this command and it will do a search and replace either just one or with a G uh, globally through an entire document. Uh, another example where we use a regular expression, we address here all lines that not only contain the string OK, but that contain the string OK at the end of the line. And then we want to delete all lines that do not end with the characters OK. So we use the delete command, which will suppress the current line being sent to standard output. And to negate the application of this pattern, we put an exclamation mark in between can also use regular expressions to have a range of, to select a range of lines. This is in fact quite similar how I, for example, prepared the exercise sheet for my uh, courses here, because the exercises are contained in the same source file as the slides, but they are surrounded by a slightly more complicated begin and end string and then I can use set to extract either only the exercises or only the slide content um, from the combined uh, source file. So here we want to print out only lines between uh, those lines that start with begin and end, and we want to include the begin and end line in the output. So we use here the minus n command to not output anything by default. And then we print out explicitly only lines between lines that start from this address, namely a line that starts with the word begin and ending with this address, namely any line that um, starts with the word end. And as a final arbitrary example to see a little bit what can be easily done with the substitute command here, we address the lines 40 to 60, and in there we look for words that start with an uppercase letter, followed by zero or more lowercase or uppercase letters, and wherever a uh, string like this is found, the first occurrence of the string, because we don't have the option G here, shall be replaced with the, um, with the letter X.